Hey everybody, and Tony here with my review of Puccini's Tosca with once again conductor Nicholas Milton, which I saw at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. This marks the fifth time I saw this production of Tosca at the Deutsche Oper Berlin because I wanted to see and hear Freddy de Tommaso performed the role of Mario Cavaradossi. As I stated before in my previous Tosca review video, Joseph Calea was supposed to sing Mario Cavaradossi. However, he called in sick, therefore Jorge de Leon had to take over from him on the 10th, and there was Freddy de Tommaso who took over from Joseph Calea tonight. Freddy de Tommaso is a rather interesting tenor because he started out in lyrical roles such as Cassio from Otello and Alfredo from La Traviata. And ever since then, he has been building himself up with more Spinto tenor roles, not only with Cavaradossi, but also with Maurizio from Adriana Le Couvreur. I first heard him on YouTube singing Nessun Dorma, and I thought that his voice was good, but not really that great. It had good technique, it had good control, and there was no signs of a wobble, let alone a tremolo. Furthermore, there was no nasality. But the question always lingered. How was Mr. De Tommaso's voice going to hold up live? That was when I went into his performance as Mario Cavaradossi tonight with an open mind. Those sentiments still held up and slightly more. He had a rock steady and secure technique that managed to make him shine quite well as a singing actor. He had sufficient charisma, all thanks to using that handsome and dashing stage presence. And there was a beautifully rounded tone that I loved in his natural full lyric tenor voice. I say full lyric tenor because Freddy De Tommaso does not approach that spinto tenor and incisiveness, let alone that sword-like quality and that bicep flexing quality that I love in many spinto tenors, let alone dramatic tenors singing Cavaradossi and roles of this ilk. Moreover, Freddy de Tommaso, given his past in terms of singing Cassio, Rodolfo, and Alfredo, does have a lovely and sufficiently plush full lyric tenor voice that made his voice stand out well, as well as formed that rock steadiness, as well as that security necessary for him to sing such a demanding role as Cavaradossi. Therefore, I could still applaud him in terms of his voice holding up well throughout the theater. However, it's not an incisive voice that I would love to be totally in awe with, let alone be surprised with, let alone find myself being on a thrill ride with. Because voices such as Giovanni Martinelli, Giovanni Zanatello, Enrico Caruso, Franco Corelli, Mario del Monaco, Gianfranco Cecchelle, and even Neil Shikoff could never escape my ears. And if we're talking about non-Italian tenors, look no further than the likes of Peter Anders, Helga Rosvenge, and even the likes of James King and Jess Thomas. Those voices were a lot more incisive, fuller, richer, and could actually sing over the orchestra with everything they've got. While Freddy de Tommaso can sufficiently sing over an orchestra, there were occasions in which he was drowned out. Nevertheless, what saved Mr. de Tommaso was his rock-steady technique, his good coordination between head voice and chest voice, and how he used those chest tones made his technique all the more secure and all the more great to listen to, as well as that charisma, that handsome charisma that also made me want to root for Cavaradossi. Freddy de Tommaso certainly has a brilliant future ahead of him. However, he needs to be very conscientious with his choice of roles. I don't see him singing the likes of Radames or even Don Alvaro, let alone Dick Johnson, and the less I could say about Otello, the better. And I don't even see him singing the likes of Caño or Turidu or all of these beefy roles. I see him singing more Rodolfo's, Alfredo's, Ducas, and even Arrigo from Ivespri Siciliani, Oronte from I Lombardi alla Prima Crociata, Rodolfo from Luisa Miller, Ruggero from La Rondine. And if we're talking French roles, Peleas from Peleas et Melisande, Jean de Led from Le Prophète, Romeo from Romeo et Juliette, Faust from Faust, Vincent from Mirel, Nadir 
from Le Pichur de Perle and De Grieux from Manon. These are roles that are much more suitable for Freddy de Tommaso's natural full lyric tenor voice instead of these beefier roles. While I will applaud his ambition, he also has to combine the ambition with conscientiousness because he does have a rock steady technique right there. It's not a nasal voice. It's not a voice that has all of these unnecessary buzzes. Yes, it does tend to go sharp, but it still has that sufficiently exciting quality that I do love in many a tenor singing Cabradossi. It's just that I don't want to see his voice go away anytime soon, let alone in three to five years time. In fact, I would definitely love to see and hear Freddy de Tommaso continue to develop his voice in the right way. I would love to see him further develop his chest tones and also make sure that his coordination between head voice and chest voice continues to be as well polished and well strengthened as ever. And more than anything, I would still love to see and hear Freddy de Tommaso continue to thrive as a fine artist who doesn't need to follow the money or the clout, but also keep his artistic integrity intact because that is what's ultimately going to save him and his career as a singing actor. Whatever reservations that I had with Freddy de Tommaso aside in terms of his voice being not too exciting to listen to, but still has a fine and steady rock solid technique, I could still give him credit for what he was able to accomplish as Mario Cavaradossi using that naturally fine full lyric tenor voice of his to make this character work effectively as well as sing his heart out with everything he got. So I still have to salute him for his magnificent efforts and I really hope that he continues to strengthen his technique as well as be mindful of his repertoire choices because this is a fine tenor I could see grow from strength to strength and who will continue to be as strong as a performer as he's always been. It's only been roughly five to six years that he has graced the stage, but he's still got a lot to learn, a lot to grow, and I certainly believe in him because his rock steady technique is the one attribute that will keep him alive and floating so long as he continues to strengthen it, as well as show mindfulness and conscientiousness. Natalia Romanev strikes again as Tosca, and while I do love the fact that she was able to be a lot more incisive with her high notes, as well as show a lot more fullness in her chest tones and coordinate much better in terms of her head voice and chest voice, her performance tonight as Tosca was slightly more reserved instead of being all fire and passion. Usually when it's the final performance of this particular role, you would need to go all out. You would need to just let your voice out with full abandon and just let it ring throughout the theater. And she does have those moments. But I did feel like there were just some things that she was holding back, which is kind of a shame because Natalia Romanev does have a great top. And she uses those top notes to her advantage with everything she's got. And she's got some really dagger-like high notes, especially her high C's that managed to be just as sharp and as piercing as they are. And speaking of those piercing high C's, when she sang her final high C, when she said, Lama, I noticed that it was a little bit more clipped back, probably because she was still recovering from her performance three days ago. But don't forget that she also took over from Tatiana Serian, who also had visa problems, thus making Natalia Romanev fly from the United Kingdom all the way to Germany to sing this performance and even rescue the entire performance. Yes, the likes of Maria Caniglia, Celestina Boninsegna, Bianca Scacciata, Eugenia Burzio, Renata Tebaldi, Maria Callas, and Leonie Rezenek will always be my ideal voices for Tosca. Nevertheless, Natalia Romanev was still in a class of her own and she was still able to give the goods with everything that she's got. Flaws and all, she was still able to persevere and I could still salute with what she was able to accomplish as Floria Tosca. Erwin Schrott actually sang a lot better as Barone Vitello Scarpia. Yes, it's not a voice that I'm not a huge fan of. Yes, I do believe that his voice is still quite flawed and yes, I eschew the notion that he is a bass baritone, 
but more of a short baritone. Just listen to the omission when he sings the entire role of Scarpia. It's a decent baritone at best, but an underdeveloped baritone at worst. And this time he was able to bring in the nobler aspects of Scarpia while also maintaining that sleazeball quality about him. Yes, he still had his quirks like his whispers, his yells, his screams, and even other movements that made him quite over the top to watch. Nevertheless, Erwin Schrott still had sufficient charisma to make the role of Scarpia come alive, although there have been other better singers who specialized in that role. And I will never, ever for the likes of me, forget the likes of Lawrence Tibbet, Leonard Warren, Gian Giacomo Guelfi, Cornel McNeil, Apollo Granforte, Gino Becchi, and Giuseppe Danisse for being awesome Scarpias, and if we're talking bass baritones, as in true bass baritones, Ferdinand Franz, and even Samuel Raimi. Those were true bass baritones who sang Scarpia excellently. Erwin Schott vocally still falls short in this role, but at least he still has charisma to make Scarpia a total slimy sleazeball. So at least Erwin Schott sang better and with a lot more vocal commitment, which I could still give him credit for, although as I stated before, it's not a voice that I'm completely crazy about because it doesn't really excite me, let alone thrill me. It's a decent baritone voice at best, but an underdeveloped baritone voice at worst, which still has charisma and sufficient charm to make Scarpia the absolute sleazeball that he was. Samuel Dale Johnson was a decent Cesare Angelotti, but as I stated before, I do not associate a bass role like Cesare Angelotti with a lyric baritone like Samuel Dale Johnson. While he continued to sing and act the role well, I do believe that his lyric baritone voice is far more suitable to the likes of Valentin from Faust, Golo from Peleas et Melisande, Silvio from Pagliacci, Ford from Falstaff, the Herald from Lohengrin, Wolfram from Tannhäuser, Marcello from La Boheme, Sharpless from Madama Butterfly, and if we're talking slightly more comical roles, Gianni Schicchi and Figaro. So while I can still give Samuel Dale Johnson credit where credit was due in terms of making the best out of this particular role, which he's always done, I do not believe that his baritone voice should ever sing this role at all, let alone touch it. Just leave Angelotti to the real bass baritones, let alone to the real basses. Pork Rowan was still as charming as ever as the sacristan, and he managed to use his solid bass baritone voice to bring in sufficient charm, masculinity, as well as charisma to that particular sacristan. And while there have been greater interpreters of the sacristan, such as Italo Tayo and Fernando Corena, I can never ever neglect the fact that Porrick Rowan still managed to have a fine stage presence and an equally fine voice that, mind you, grew better to make the role of the sacristan come alive with his trademark oafishness as well as using that voice of his to make the sacristan a slightly more dignified character and instead of that blustery ranter that he tends to be. Therefore, I salute Porrick Rowan in terms of what he was able to accomplish as a sacristan as well as his continuously fine vocal efforts making this role come alive with everything that he's got. Jörg Scherner is still a good Spoletta despite some of his vocal flaws being that of nasality as well as having occasions where he didn't sound supported at all but at least there was still a vocal presence that showed the sliminess and the oiliness of this particular minion. And his final moments of the opera were still as strong as ever. So I also have to salute Jörg Schörner for what he was able to do with Spoletta in terms of using that character tenor voice that had a lot of personality to the best of his abilities. Artur Garbas wasn't really imposing as Sharonne, but he still has a decent lyric baritone voice that has all the potential to grow and glow with every role that he sings. And I would love to see him develop his technique in the best way possible because his voice as Sharonne doesn't really sound as well supported, let alone as chesty. And I'm sure that if Artur Garbas continues to develop his chest tones the right way, we would have a fine lyric baritone worth rooting for.
Daniel Nicholson was also fine as the Jailer by using his lyric baritone voice to bring this character alive. And I continue to see a fine future for Daniel Nicholson if he continues to develop his technique the right way. And Lola Haberstock's charming shepherd boy is balm for the ears. She was able to use that child soprano voice to make the shepherd come alive. And it was such angelic singing that she accomplished for someone who was still so young. Overall, the singing did continue to vary from quality to quality, but I could still give major props to Freddy de Tommaso in terms of his stirring and really solid portrayal as Cabradossi. There is a voice right there that can continue to bloom and grow if he continues to develop his technique the right way. His well-coordinated head voice and chest voice is what also made him a fine singer tonight. And his flair for drama in terms of what he was able to build up to in the final act made him a trooper through and through. Yes, Freddy de Tommaso's voice isn't particularly exciting or powerful, let alone incisive. But Mr. de Tommaso falls back on good, rock steady, and solid technique in order to let his voice shine well and even make his performance as Cavaradossi sufficiently dramatic. He may not reach the high standards of Giacomo Lauri Volpi, Enrico Caruso, Mario del Monaco, let alone Franco Corelli, but he's still in a class of his own so long as he continues to be as conscientious with his choice of repertoire and so long as he continues to build up his technique the right way. And I also have to give sufficient applause to Natalia Romanev for also being a trooper through and through, as well as a bit of an applause to Erwin Schrott for also bringing in charisma to Scarpia. At least what I could say about the character part from Samuel Dale Johnson to Patrick Rowan to Jörg Scherner to Artur Garbas to Daniel Nicholson and even to the sweet Lola Haberstock can all affirm just how great these singers are in their own special ways in terms of making the best out of their respective characters. The conducting done by Nicholas Milton was actually a lot better and far more involved and incisive. It was a lot more exciting in terms of how he was able to motivate that orchestra to play big and loud in the best way possible and even make me as the listener far more excited to see what's going on next. And there was that one moment where I thought that he was being sloppy. In fact, everything was consistent through and through. And what more can I say about the chorus and the orchestra of the Deutsche Oper Berlin? They continue to be as reliable and as excellent as they've always been. So overall, with Freddy de Tommaso's rock steady, solid, and strong technique being absolutely great assets in terms of him rescuing the performance of tonight's Tosca, as well as being such a fine Cavaradossi through and through, I can still salute him for what he was able to accomplish as this particular painter, and even what he was able to do to emit sufficient passion, as well as a lot of charisma to make Mario Cavaradossi come to life. He was also backed up by some equally great singing accomplished by Natalia Romanev, who despite some vocal flaws, still managed to make Tosca the role of her own. And it's ultimately Freddy de Tommaso and Natalia Romanov who stole the show from everybody's feet, with Freddy de Tommaso ranking slightly higher than Romanov because of his rock-steady technique found in his well-coordinated voice, as well as using the head voice and chest voice with everything that he's got. And for those of you who saw this performance of Tosca tonight at the Deutsche Oper Berlin, what'd you think of it? Did you really admire Freddy de Tommaso's performance as Mario Cavaradossi? Was there a moment that you really liked in his performance? Did you feel like his voice was sufficiently good for this role? Or did you feel like he fell short in terms of the demands of Cavaradossi? Please comment below and let me know. Well, that's it for my review of Puccini's Tosca at the Deutsche Oper Berlin starring Freddy de Tommaso as Mario Cavaradossi. Tune in next time where I hopefully review Mozart's Die Zauberflöte, also the Deutsche Oper Berlin, starring Hie Jung Moon as the Queen of the Night. So until then, good night everybody, and I hope you all have a wonderful Easter week.